Hello everyone, this is Quintilian and welcome to my first video. In this video, I will introduce using Nomad Sculpt on the iPad. So what I would recommend you to have is an iPad and a pencil. You could use Nomad Sculpt on Android devices, but I would really recommend having a, a pencil. It would help you a lot. Uh, so, if you are new to 3D modeling, or if you're new to 3D sculpting, or if you want to get into 3D modeling or sculpting, then Nomad Sculpt is a very good app to start with. Uh, I come from a background in 3D modeling using different apps, softwares such as 3D Studio Max, Cinema 4D, and Blender. And I was never been big fan of 3D sculpting. I, for me, ZBrush seemed so complex. However, it's a great app. ZBrush is a great software, but I like the idea of being able to work on the go. And as you can see, this is one of my last creation. It's still in process. Um, and I'm, I'm enjoying this kind of uh, on the go, small sculpt that turns into something you would like. So if you would like to join the 3D creation world, uh, Nomad Sculpt is a great start. So without further ado, let's start with explaining what you see in here when the software or the app opens. Uh, on top, you would have a big menu. So this is your main menu. In here, you would have your slider and shortcuts, and you have your undo, redo, cameras shortcuts and isolation and mask shortcuts in here so in this corner and then you would have all your tool here i would recommend you to use whatever you prefer in terms of the format of this layout but for the ease of you to look into how i go about using these tools i would click on this spanner here and this would show you um, a different layout. Okay, so we've talked about the main menu, we've talked about sliders, let me just explain quickly what each does and then we will start by modeling a donut. Uh, you've heard that somewhere before, haven't you? Yeah, this is a love letter to Blender Guru, since donut is the beginning of Blender, donuts can be the beginning of Nomad Sculpt uh, or any other software. So, uh, on here you would have this file uh, which allow you to save, load, um, open, rename, delete. You can also adjust the auto save in here. You can export, and what I like about Nomad Sculpt is that you could export as a GITF, which has the colors information and that can be implemented or imported directly to Bl Blender. That was amazing. Uh, I, you have OBJ and STL for 3D printing. You can also render it. So under render here, it's an actual export of what you see in here in a different resolution. So you could use the screen 72, 720 and 4K, and of course, resettings reset your settings next you would have your scene your scene is where all your objects are so if you are if you have a model like this you would find that i have an uh, the eyes as an object on its own layer i would have the teeth it's on its own layer i would have the suit on layer and belt and the non-shocks uh, you control how many objects you have, you control how you sculpt them, and you control what we call the resolution of these objects. By the way, underneath the scene here, you could scroll down and you would find that there's primitive, and primitive is the different objects that you start with, since you can't start from an empty geometry. Think of 3D sculpting as a real-life sculpting. You need your molding material. You need your um, clay to work with. Next to it, you would have your topology. And topology, think of your topology. So if I show here my topology, you would see, for example, 
that the helmet squares are bigger than those very tiny squares of the suit. And that's because the resolution for the suit is higher, meaning that the higher the resolution, the finer your detail would be. But the problem is that would be using more of your memory and it would require more processing power. And if you're exporting it and importing it again to a 3D software, that would require more time. So think of your resolution as your pixels equivalent in an image. The more pixels you have, the more fine and more detailed your image would be, but the less pixel you have, the smaller and the easier to share the image would be. So it's always a, a try to balance the amount of details you would like to show versus the amount of resolution that you would like the mesh to have. You can also do a remeshing, meaning you could re-change how the mesh look like by using this tool here underneath topology. You have dynamic topology, which means rather than you changing the topology manually, every time you're using one of these tools that are available for you here, you could simply um, make it enabled and that would change the resolution according to how you use the tool. I never use it. Um, or I haven't used it yet, but there might be a time where I can use it. In here, you can do a global remesh for all the meshes you have, if we agree that each one of these is a mesh. And then you would have the brush settings, which you would not need to know about now. Next to it, you would have the lighting and what I would like you to know. So you see this shortcut, it allows you to see, to, show, to see a wire version of your 3D. In here, you would have your shading, and your shading have two types. A meter cap, which is the one I prefer to work while I'm sculpting because it mimics how natural clay look like. And you would have PBR. By the way, I said it, it mimics how natural clay look like. That's not accurate because you could change the um, matte cap to be something like this or something like this, which is cartoony. Uh, I can talk about this later on if you would like to, but what I do usually is I try to use something like this, which is like a gray clay. Uh, you have a PBR, which is more based on material with reflection and metallic uh, properties. You can also change your environment in here by importing your HDR and you can simply import uh, your created images and having an HDR will sh uh, like a proper HDR would show you a better lighting setting or a finer light so you can see the difference for example between the one I have here and the one I've created here uh, sometimes you would like to experiment with things especially with the way that your model look like so I enjoy drawing sometimes and painting my own and trying even settings where you have one light, etc. But also in the new versions of Nomad Sculpt, you have light. By the way, this is the 1.47 version. This is something to keep in mind if you're watching this in the future or in the past. So keep this in mind. Uh, let's move from shading. Oh, by the way, one cool, cool. A uh, tool available under shading is the opacity. So you could change an opacity of an object. So if you can look into uh, the um, non shock belt here, you can see, or chain here, you can see that it, it is changing the opacity. So I've used this for the helmet with the chrome material, and uh, so you know. Okay, next to that, you would have your post process and I would suggest at the beginning of a project not to have this turned on, but it, it would be really helpful moving forward. So post process allowing you to have a max of samples of the quality of the image, allowing you to have a better reflection, a better ambient occlusion. So if I turn off my um, post process, you can see it's still looking good, but it looks way better when this is on. So in here you can see. Uh, you can also pin if you would like a tool or a menu to stay. 
Uh, you have here you have your background and you can change it from being an environment to color or a reference image I'll, i use the reference image um so lately i've been working on this dwight shoot uh model uh so i've been using some images of him and toys available for him uh you could i could also i use the background image or the reference image as a background when you export it it's still or it stay there and then finally you would have your camera and you would have your perspective and orthographic camera and perspective camera uh, has an angle of which you have the field of view i usually keep it at uh, 35 which i think is is really good um, but you can sometimes experiment with it you can also change the speed of moving the camera and the way that the pivot of the camera works so enough all of this talk let's start creating something i've mentioned in here you have all of the tools and on top in here you have options allowing you to control these tools so if i you are in the mask if you click in here you would see that there is settings associated with the mask if you are using a brush if you click here Nothing is associated with the brush in here, but probably you would need to work on your brush settings, such as the alpha, the fall off, and the stroke type. And you would have the painting brush available for you here. And what I like about it, if you are in the PBR, so if you go here, and you are in the PBR, you would have a material such as roughness and mittenness available for you. So you can see now how that would impact. By the way, I am working on a very small, uh, tiny object here, which is uh, this chain. And as you can see, whenever I'm changing the material, that would show a preview on the existing material. So if I click on first paint, all that would happen. Undo is available for you here. And as you can see, my autosave is on because I don't like it breaking suddenly. In here, you have a symmetry and symmetry is something interesting if you're working on objects such as human. Um, you have the pressure, which you could sit in here. You could add layers and you could have access to display option and interface the only thing i play with here is probably the color so the main color of my display but what's also i i like is in the display settings i go to the render resolution and i put this all the way up i'm using an ipad pro and a new one so it is more than capable of handling uh, the highest uh, settings you might want to experiment with your ipad and see if you would like uh, less settings in order for the app not to crash